48. Hello, and here's your 2008 News Roundup. The Labour Party have unveiled ambitious plans to create a national health service that offers clean, safe, infection-free health care for all. This will be achieved through the radical use of taxpayers' money. The Health Minister has unveiled ambitious plans to transform the National Health Service back into something that offers clean, safe, infection-free <laughs> health care for all. This will be achieved through the radical use of hot, soapy water and some mops. <laughs> Travel, and it has been predicted that with the creation of a new kind of road called a motorway, cars will be able to travel from London and arrive just five hours later in Edinburgh. Travel, and it's been predicted that with the creation of additional lanes on motorways, cars will be able to travel from London and arrive just five hours later in Watford. <laughs> And today at Sotheby's, an antique painting found under a pile of old clothes, rubble and broken bottles was auctioned for almost a thousand pounds. Art, and today at Sotheby's, a pile of old clothes, rubble and broken <laughs> bottles, you're ahead of me, was, <laughs> was auctioned for almost ten million pounds. The economy, and it emerged today that the average house price is now £1,700. The economy, and it emerged today that the average house price is now £1,700. and England international Billy Wright has broken his ankle in a training session. He will now miss several matches, seriously affecting the promotion chances of the club. Football and England international David Beckham has broken his fingernail in a tanning session. <laughs> he will now miss several photo shoots, seriously affecting the promotion campaign of his skincare range. <laughs> Cricket and the England side has been soundly beaten by the visiting Australians. The MCC has pledged that this humiliating debacle shall never happen ever again. <laughs> Cricket and oh, don't ask. <laughs> and finally, on the 14th of November, 1948. His newly born Royal Highness Prince Charles burped contentedly, rolled over, and fell soundly asleep. And 60 years later, if this sketch goes on for much longer, <laughs> he'll probably do exactly the same. Happy birthday! Happy birthday. Some of the greatest names in comedy, all under one roof. And there is something for everyone, whether you like sketches or stand-up or musical comedy, we've got something for you. And there's lots more still to come, so let's cross back into the auditorium now. See you next time. Now, before I introduce the next act, I'd like to take this opportunity to ask you, sir, and I realise this is possibly not the very best moment, but I was wondering, and I'm sure you get this all the time, um, is there any chance for knighthood? <laughs> give me the card. Give me the card. Don't. Give me, don't. The, give me the card. Take them off. I Take them off. I, I, I knew I should have gone private. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please let me welcome, actually please welcome, Stephen K. Amos. Thank you very much. What a very lovely warm welcome. Can I just also point out, as the only black man on the bill, if you don't laugh, maybe you're a little bit racist. <laughs> well done, joke number one. <laughs> Basically, ladies and gentlemen, I've been travelling around this great country of ours and seeing some very funny things. 
I went up north, went to Leeds. Everybody here from Leeds? Yeah. Oh, one person in the front. <laughs> <laughs> I drove up to Leeds, because that's right, folks, I do own a car. Check me. <laughs> And as you get to Leeds, there's a great big sign on the motorway. It said, Leeds, city full of surprises. I was there eight hours, nothing. <laughs> Maybe that's the surprise. I get to the show, in the front row, 12 stunning blonde ladies. They were quite clearly on some sort of Hindu, because 11 of them were dressed as Indians. <laughs> Feather in their hair. One of them was wearing a sari. <laughs> Now, I'm not a member of Mensa, <laughs> but I'm guessing she wasn't the sharpest tool in the box. <laughs> Can you imagine her getting that phone call? Yes, yeah, Sarah's do. We're all going as Indians. I'll see you there. <laughs> At the same show, to my left, four guys, big guys. I said, all right, sir, what do you do for a living? He said, I'm a teacher. I said, is it a mixed school? He said, no, they're all white. <laughs> See, my face must have gone. And he went, ah! <laughs> But I saw the funny side. I was there in Leeds for two days, and I thought, I'm going to try and, and, and amuse myself. I'll go to the cinema. I wasn't banking on meeting odd folk. I walked down the street. I stopped a lady. Excuse me, where is the local cinema? She looked me in the eye and she went, are you from round here? Uh, uh, no. The clue is in my question to you. <laughs> so I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll pretend I've lost my voice. I'll pretend I can't speak. I'll buy a pad and pen, I'll get by. I wasn't banking on meeting odd folk. With pad and pen in hand, I walk down a few streets, I find the cinema, I pick my film. On the pad I wrote, due to bad throat, cannot speak, would like to watch a film. Gave the pad to the guy behind the counter. He took it, read it, laughed, took my pen, and on the same pad he wrote, what would you like to see? <laughs> I took my pad, pad and pen and I wrote, although I cannot speak, I am not deaf. <laughs> He takes Batman's hand and pen, and he writes, sorry. <laughs> These are the strange people I don't want to see. <laughs> Whenever I play America, the Americans don't get me, for example, right? Because apparently in America, my face doesn't fit my voice. This is my face. <laughs> this is my voice. Deal with it. I went to New York, a place called Harlem. <laughs> Yeah! I had the walk down pat, giving it all that. I went into the bank and I said, Excuse me. One would like to exchange a traveller's check. The girl behind the desk went, Say what? <laughs> I'd like to exchange a traveller's checks. And she goes, Hold on, hold on. Alopecia, get over here. <laughs> Over here. <laughs> now, say it again. I'd like to exchange these travelers' checks. Hey, are you from France? <laughs> I was confused. But whenever I meet people, I always try and make a connection. Because I don't like to be judged, right? I did a show and in the center of London, didn't go very well. It didn't go well at all. I got very, very drunk. And at one o'clock in the morning, I'm staggering home. And in the distance, I spot a little old lady. And folks, as she clocks me, she clutches her handbag thus. Something inside me died, folks. So I went over to the little old lady, and I took that handbag. <laughs> I did it, I did it. You're going, oh my God! <laughs> what on earth is that Negro talking about? <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night.
don't worry about me. I, I can't feel a thing. Uh, excuse me. What is the eleventh letter of the English alphabet? K. <laughs> now run for it, you stupid. Watch. <laughs> We thought what we'd like to do next is, is to try and get into the Guinness Book of Records for the longest sketch ever performed to a live audience. <laughs> and who better to stretch it out for hours than our next guest? He's a veteran of several great television shows, mostly based on old ideas of mine. He's also outstandingly good at Vickers. Please welcome the voluptuous Rowan... Atkinson! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. 